Hello and welcome everyone. This is Type V3, and today we're taking a look at some old iron in the form of this Super Robot Shigokin All Tizen. And for those unfamiliar with the character, this is one of the two main leads from Bandai's Super Robot Tizen Original Generation series. Now let's start with the obvious. The All Tizen is one powerful looking robot. The aesthetics of this figure are incredible. It may appear simple from a glance, but up close many little details have been molded into the sculpt. Even areas like the underside of his feet, calves, and shoulders were given attention. As for die-cast content, most of it lies within his lower legs and the primary connections between his limbs and torso. The paint, however, is what really makes his figure shine. Two separate tones of sparkly metallic red cover the figure, and the matte black and white highlights make for a vivid contrast. I especially love the green used for this robot's eyes. They really pop. Oh, and that stake on his right arm isn't chrome-plated. It's stainless steel. Now the Altizen has this very emotive ball-jointed head as well as the same ball-jointed waist, so very cool. The shoulders themselves are die-cast, so that does make them really tight to move. But they also have this cool feature where they can extend outward just like that. And it's separate from the actual shoulder for the arm, which has a swivel and of course a double-jointed elbow. Uh, there's a ball-jointed wrist too. So that's shoulder assembly there is just really cool. Three separate joints just to help you with the posing. If you turn them around, even these thrusters can move up and out of your way. And this jetpack here has four independent thrusters that can move on their own through ball joints. However, the actual backpack itself is very loose, and so every time I'm holding him, it kind of just pops out. So that's something to take note of. The hip skirts can all move and get out of the way if you so choose. And just like the shoulders, the main hip joint is die cast, which makes it very tight. So, I like that. Nice thigh swivel there, double jointed knees, and even the foot is cool because this part comes up, and then you can pull the foot down to get a full tilt or turn, and then even the toe can come up. Now the toe is really tight, and it can't really go that far, but you can see there's a slight bend that's happened there, so that's really nice. Overall, I think articulation on this figure is good. Compared to more modern Super Robot Shigokin releases, it's not going to hold up and add to the fact that this is more of a bulkier robot in design, so no matter how you move them, you're not going to notice all the small little adjustments that you'll see with smaller figures, and a lot of this figure's bulk, like these shoulders or these huge calves, kind of get in the way. So, it's okay at best, but... Honestly, it doesn't bug me too much considering his design. When it comes to accessories, the Altizen doesn't really have much to offer. Apart from the fists he comes with, there's really only one other pair of hands included, and they're of the I've got fingers type. Usually, these can make any figure look much more dynamic, but because this robot's main armaments lay on his forearms, I think the fists do a much better job at conveying an epic attack, or just being on the figure at all times. The other accessory he comes with are the blast effect parts. The first is for his heat horn, while the second emulates his revolver stake in action. These both look awesome, and I appreciate the simplicity to their implementation. To be honest, this is one of the few figures that I leave the effect parts on almost all the time. They're just that cool. So what else comes in the box? Well, nothing. That's it. But that's okay, since everything else needed is already strapped to the figure. First is the auto cannon on his left arm. It looks great, but could have used some bullet effect parts. As for the revolver stake on his right arm, well, the cylinder does spin and you can even pull it out. Sadly, no bullets will drop. But the main gimmick to the Altizen are his heavy claymores. To demonstrate this, all you need to do is open up his shoulders. The detailing on the inside isn't anything special, but I'm glad that there's something there. Now while this feature is cool, I do feel like it lacks a little something. An included effect part here would have really made this look shine, because as it is right now, it's a little bit boring. All in all, the Super Robot Shigokin Altizen is a good figure, but pales in comparison to more recent SRC releases. However, it's certainly a great representation of the character. Usually, I find recommending these good but flawed toys quite tough, but surprisingly, that's not the case with this one. All you really have to ask yourself is, do I like the look? Because that's basically where almost all this figure's appeal comes from. The articulation as a whole is mediocre, and the accessory count is low. But at the end of the day, the Altizen resembles a giant, robotic rhinoceros beetle who's got a burning passion to crush anything that stands in his way. And for me, that's enough. Just don't go out of your way and pay some ridiculous amount for it. This example cost me about $35, and at that price, I'm completely satisfied. Anyways, this has been Type V3. 
Thanks for watching, and for as much as I love the SRCL Tizen, he's actually not my favorite robot to come out of the Super Robot Tizen original generation series, because like I said at the beginning of this review, this was only one of two main leads from the Japanese series.